And potentially very divisive issues, of course, we're talking NATO expansion, further east towards Russia. What may the policy, the support from America be about that? Will it change? Will it wane? Will it increase? And, of course, that very controversial missile defense shield. Well, you know, and What's I was likely to happen with that? Now I can President. say it, and there was um, uh, Mike McFall, um, a professor at Stanford University, he's been working on the he was working on the Obama campaign. He may be a part of the administration now. And I asked him, I said, Mike, you know, there's, there's these tripping points here. Mm. I said, what about anti-missile defense? He said, for President Obama, if it works, and we can afford it. Well, no one's convinced anyone that it actually really works. And I'm talking about, can they afford oh, it? Can they, they, they afford anything right now? <laughs> uh, NATO expansion, and he said to me, laughingly, he said, America's more interested in the security of the state of Georgia, mm. not in the Caucasus, but in America. Maybe that was just campaign hunt, but I think that you know the, the Russian side is going to say, look, you know what has been going on in the last eight years has been very much a threat to the security of the Russian Federation, mm -hmm. and Russia has made it very clear that it will stand its ground. And I think that you know what Obama will do is if he's not going to be uh, pursuing that, he'll back away from it without losing face. Mm. Uh, we're talking there about the American coffers. So much money has been invested in so many conflicts, hasn't it, over the last few years. Uh, we've also got the, the this hit on Wall Street now at the moment. Uh, America is pretty beleaguered. Do you think, what will this do for the American psyche now? Do you think it will give America a boost? I Maybe think, you know, of so much of politics is about confidence and, and leadership. I, I think Obama has done that. He's pulled off an amazing. But will it be uh, short lived? Well, see, you know, you know, even my eyes get we're getting all swelled up watching this. Okay, mm. this is my country. This is this is America. I'm an American, and watching this amazing change. But again, you know, it's come down to earth. You know, if, what kind of change are we talking about? Especially in foreign policy, which I am most interested in. I actually live in this country, in Russia, mm -hmm. and I do not want to see the United States and Russia continue to go down the path of a new Cold War, neo Cold War, whatever you want to call it, the post post Cold War. Um, the, 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 this, the bilateral relationship is very, very important, and I really will hope to see it change. Though, let's be realistic, Kevin, that's not going to happen tomorrow, it's not going to happen in January, it will, probably won't happen until maybe first indications when we have the next uh, G8, uh, and that's really basically summer. Who do you think we might see uh, taking the place, uh, the job of uh, Secretary of State? I'm not going to mention names right now, but I will be looking at their resumes very carefully to see where, what side of the aisle they come on, and that's really basically being a realist or a neocon. If I see someone with a neocon background, I'm going to really, really worry. And I think the rest of the world will as well. Okay. All right, Pete, well, thanks for that for now. Uh, well, in his concession speech, John McCain noted the historic nature of the election of an African-American to the highest office in the land, didn't he, Pete? He, he also urged all Americans to get behind the leadership of Barack Obama to heal the divisions in the country. For the latest, let's cross uh, now live to Katrina Zareva, who's in Phoenix, where uh, McCain uh, watched the election results uh, roll in. We watched yeah, him do it. Right also, Marina Port now is in yeah. Chicago, Barack Obama's stronghold. Uh, uh, morning to you, indeed, uh, evening to you. Good morning to you, wherever you are, <laughs> ladies. A lot of time changes here. Um, uh, first question, really, to you, Marina. Barack Obama has promised that he will make a lot of change. That was his key word during the presidential campaign, wasn't it? How is he going to make those words reality, do you think? Well, Kevin, that's a very, very good question. As the country and the world has noticed, Barack Obama is a very engaging speaker. It's his uh, mannerisms, his eloquence, his rhetoric that has caught on uh, around the world, particularly by Americans. That is what has won over the majority of Americans. But rhetoric will only take you so far. In two months, he is going to have to act, and the country will be watching. He will have his plate foot full when he walks into the White House. But what we know is that what he's gained from America is trust. He has the trust of the American people who right now feel very vulnerable. The economy is in a very bad situation. America is at war with two wars, rather. America has two wars going on, and uh, you know the planet is in peril. Obama talks about all these things, but we will have to see more action come January. Now, the outcome is unprecedented and full Republican supporters is going to be hard to accept. Now, what are people saying in Phoenix, Katrina? Well, Kevin, you can imagine it was uh, a pretty sad event here in Phoenix tonight. 
It was hailed to be a victory night, the McCain hailing victory night. It was anything but that. You probably see behind me everything, the decorations, the stage, the sound technicians are busy at work taking down the decorations. And it really is quite symbolic. And also linking back to what my colleague Marina has just said, the election is over, the historical event has already taken place, but it's the mess that the country is in that still needs to be cleaned up. And how that will going to how that is going to happen? Who is uh, how how it's going to take place? Who is it going to affect most? That is what the world and the American people are going to be watching. But the Republican supporters that we've managed to talk to tonight are certainly certain about how this is going to turn out, and their predictions are all negative. They're all saying that Barack Obama is the wrong man to head the United States of America. They're saying that they're disappointed in all those people who voted for him. Um, some were actually crying as they filed out of the Arizona Biltmore Resort Ballroom, which is where I'm standing right now. But we did see one woman who um, passed by us, pointed at herself and just lip-mouthed Obama supporter and just disappeared right into the crowd. So even here, some people were in favor of the man who has become the 44th president-elect of the United States. Uh, Marina, according to projections, uh, they say Congress will be democratic as well. We don't know by what majority. Uh, what does that mean policy-wise? Well, there's various issues to that uh, if it does happen, but to keep it simple, if there is a Democratic majority, it means that the Democratic officials will have more muscle. They will be able to push through their legislation. They will be able to make more decisions. They will be able to allocate funding to their projects. Uh, and then when it comes to the Republican voice within Congress, they will not have such a hard position. It will, uh, they will face challenges if they do not find a way to unite with the Democrats. Uh, pointing to what Katerina was just saying, after this election, if Republicans are coming out and say, Barack Obama is the wrong man, this was the wrong choice, that is already getting off to not a good start. What we've seen in this election is that Americans are responding for, to someone who's calling for unity. And if we see a Democratic majority in Congress, that one thing is clear. The American public is revolting against the Republican Party. Many would argue they have reason to. So moving forward, what the country, it seems, wants now is unity, not division. Uh, Katrina, although the Republicans uh, ha have lost this election, they do seem to have, they, uh, have raised an ambitious politician in the shape and form of Sarah Palin. Uh, this isn't the last we're going to see of her, I guess, is it? No, indeed it's not, and uh, quite a historic figure in her own right, Governor Palin of Alaska, ironically, Alaska, Alaska was the last state to close its uh, vote, uh, polling stations, but just as Alaska does have the last but not least vote, Sarah Palin is definitely not the last or least important politician to emerge in the recent months. She's already said that she will not end her political career. She does have some pretty strong ambitions. And the gossip around New York, Washington, various other states, certainly uh, buzzing in the internet communities, is that Sarah Palin actually has some strong presidential ambitions. So we may actually see her coming out with her own campaign come 2012. And actually, some of the Republican supporters that we've overheard talking to each other here tonight in the Arizona Biltmore have said that after the um, loss of John McCain, they will now turn to support Governor Palin in 2012, so she may well be entertaining um, some serious presidential ambitions, and everybody is definitely certain to keep an eye on Sarah Palin in the next years to come. Katrina Azarova, Marina Portnaya, uh, thank you to both of you uh, from uh, Chicago and Illinois there. Good to hear from you. This is RT. Uh, just a quick reminder for you, if you just turn the television on and you've been somewhere else, maybe Mars this morning, uh, it's just to really uh, update our top story that uh, Barack Obama is the uh, president-elect of America. He will be the next president in 77 days' time. The first African-American, he'll be the 44th president. Uh, the 47-year-old made it through with a landslide victory. Plenty more comment to come from us this side of the pond 
here in Russia, uh, giving a Russian slant of perspective on it. Stay with us. The Wayfarer is looking for new friends. He's trying to get in with the in crowd. He's guiding a flock of birds. Come on, over this way. Straight up. Look. And he's being a real gentleman, as always. There you go. Who's going to be the Wayfarer's new friend? Only a trip to Belgrade has the answer. Thank you. 